Hey everybody, in this video we're going to look at the SI system and then we're going to do some basic unit conversion problems. So first the SI system. This is the International System of Units or Measurement. And we call it the SI system because France had a lot to do with the development of this system and the French language they tend to switch words around so instead of saying international system they have it switched that's why it's SI. So anyway, you know this probably as the metric system. That's what it's commonly referred to as. And this is a system of units that almost every country in the world uses. In fact, there's only three countries in the world who have not adopted the SI system. One is Myanmar, and then we've got Liberia. And the third one, yep, it's us, the United States. So we were kind of late in the game in this. There's a lot of history about it. Um, but at this point in the 70s, you know, there was a push to, to move to the metric system. Uh, it didn't work. It would cost a lot of money and, you know, Americans can be stubborn sometimes for change. So that would be difficult to do at this point. Not saying it will ever happen, but we'll see. For this class, we're going to use the MKS system in uh, the SI system. I'm not sure what that stands for, but the base units will be for length, we have a meter. For mass, we've got kilograms. So be careful with this one because a lot of people want to just use grams, but it, we need it in the kilogram. That's how all the, the other units are going to be based off of. So make sure you've got things in kilograms there. And then for time is seconds. Oh, look at that. Meters, kilograms, seconds, MKS. Huh, all right. Now, with this, you need to convert everything to these base units before you use them in an equation. That's extremely important. So if you have a, a distance or a length in centimeters, you need to convert that to meters before you put an equation. Same thing with mass. If it's in grams, you need to put in kilograms. If you've got something in hours, you need to convert that to seconds before you use them in an equation. We will have very few exceptions to that rule uh, this year in, in physics class. And even so, you can always go to meters, kilograms, and seconds. So keep that in mind. Now, side note, a smaller system in the SI system is called the CGS system. So instead of meters, kilograms, seconds, they would use centimeters, grams, seconds. Uh, but you don't need to worry about that. We're using the MKS system. Derived units are units that are just simply derived from these base units, the meter, kilogram, second. One example is speed. Speed is in meters per second. Um, it's a length over time. And our base unit for length is meters. Our base unit for time is seconds. Force. That's a weird one, okay? So uh, a lot of these derived units are going to get kind of weird looking. Uh, sometimes not very conceptual. So uh, don't worry about force for right now. I just put that in there as an example of a derived unit. It's got kilograms, meters, and seconds in it, uh, but we don't need to worry about that now. We'll, we'll get there when the time comes. Metric prefixes. So you've probably seen a lot of these. Uh, if you work with computers, I'm sure mega and giga look familiar. Chemistry, you probably use some of the smaller ones like milli, micro, maybe nano. Uh, I'm not sure, um, but these are, are some common ones. Now, I didn't put every one in here. You've got things like deci, hecto, deca. Those are, are not used very often, so I didn't bother putting them in here. In fact, for this first semester, really, these three are the, the ones you need to know. Milli, centi, kilo, like millimeter, centimeter, kilogram, or kilometer. Um, but remember, we always need to convert those to the base units, meters, kilograms, seconds. So make sure you're good at that. We're going to go through a couple of examples, uh, but you need to be able to do that. So here we go, an example. 4,370 millimeters, we want to convert that to meters. So I know you've done unit conversions before. If you have your own way of doing it and it works, go for it. You don't need my method. Um, you don't have to do it my way, but I'm just going to show you how I do it. So I start with what I'm given, 4,370 millimeters. I put that over one to kind of build that fraction. And then we're just going to go through a series of conversions until we get there. Now, in terms of format, I know some people do the kind of the boxes, just a straight line across and then vertical lines. That's totally fine, whatever you're comfortable with. 
So now we need to get to meters. So if you know a conversion between millimeters and meters, now is the time to use it. And I do know that conversion. I know, and you should know um, eventually, if you don't know it already, that there are 1,000 millimeters in one meter, 1,000 millimeters in a meter. So we need to, to write that fraction properly. And if you remember from previously doing unit conversions, we need to get rid of millimeters. So in our next fraction, millimeters need to be on the bottom, and then meters is on the top. So there we go, 1,000 millimeters, one meter. Now it's important, after you write down your given, every step beyond that really is, is equivalent, the numerator and denominator. Um, essentially it's, it's one. You don't, if, you, if it's not equivalent, numerator and denominator, you're gonna be changing this number and you don't wanna do that. Okay, so one meter is equal to 1,000 millimeters. So we've got that. Millimeters cancel out. I should have put that in here. I can do it right now. Millimeters cancel out. So we're going to be left with meters, uh, 4.37 meters. Just multiply the tops, the bottoms, divide, whatever you need to do, 4.37 meters. Now, if you notice on the chart previously, for milli, I had the multipliers 10 to the negative 3. And I did not use that in this first conversion. So if you want to memorize that chart and do it that way, this is how you would do it. Um, I'm much more comfortable just remembering 1,000 millimeters in a meter. So I, I would encourage you to go that route. But anyway, if you want to use those multipliers, when you do the conversion, the 1 goes with the prefix, in this case, milli. And then the multiplier goes with the prefixless unit, in this case, meters. Um, you can see mathematically that step is exactly the same. So, of course, you're going to get the same answer. All right, let's do another one. So, 12,584 grams to kilograms. So, again, we need things in kilograms to put in our equations. So, this is going to be important. Start with what you're given. Put it over 1. So, 12,584 grams over 1. Now, do you know the conversion between grams and kilograms? If you do, do that right now. And since grams is on top, we need grams on bottom. I happen to know there are a thousand grams in one kilogram. So there we go. And again, this step has to be equivalent, numerator and denominator. One kilogram is a thousand grams. So our grams are going to cancel out. We're left with kilograms, which is 12.584 kilograms. Okay. So we're going to write all these out for now, but you're going to get to a point you're going to see a number in grams and immediately just know what that is in kilograms. If you haven't noticed, you can just move the decimal point three places, but make sure you move it the correct direction. So be careful with that. And then if we want to use the multipliers, um, again, the one goes with the prefix. The multiplier goes with the prefix list. In this case, if you look back at the chart, that's 10 to the third, which is a thousand. So that is identical. You're going to get the same answer. 58 centimeters to meters. Okay, so start with what we're given, 58 centimeters, put that over 1, get that fraction going. Now, I know there are 100, 100 centimeters in 1 meter. Centimeters are on top, I need centimeters on the bottom. So there's my next step, and then this is all we need to do. Like I said, these are pretty simple conversions. It's just one step, and then we're going to get our answer there. So we end up with 0.58 meters. And this is another one. You're going to get really good at this. You're going to see something in centimeters. Boom. You're going to know exactly what it is in meters without writing this all out. Remember, to move the decimal point the correct direction. I'll be very careful with that. One more time with the multiplier. The 1 goes with the prefix. The multiplier 10 to the negative 2 with the prefix list. Mathematically, these are identical. You get the same 0.58 meters. Okay. Two more we have. Okay. How many minutes are in a year? So we're going to have to convert some time. Um, this is going to come into play. We're not getting this deep into conversions right now, but we will be converting miles per hour to meters per second. So we need to deal with the time conversions at some point. All right, so start with what you're given, one year. We want to know how many minutes are in one year. So I put one year, put that over one. Now there's a couple directions you could go here, um, but I'm going to say do not go to 12 months is equal to one year. I know that's true, but then your next step well, how many days are in a month? It depends on what month it is. So avoid going to 12 months in a year. Instead, I'm going to use 365 days in one year. Okay. So right now I've got years on top, so years on bottom. So if we stopped right now, we would have days, which is kind of silly because it's just 365 days times one. Now our next step, 
if you know how many minutes are in a day, hey, go for it. I don't know that off the top of my head, so I'm going to go hours. I know there are 24 hours in one day. Days are on top there, so I need days on bottom to cancel out. It's not keeping my writing here, but that's okay. So right now, if we multiplied this out, we would have hours. We're not quite there yet. We want to know how many minutes. So we need to convert hours to minutes. And you should recognize there are 60 minutes in one hour. So the hours cancel out. So we multiply, divide, whatever we need to do. And then we get the answer of... 525,600 minutes. Okay. How many feet are in a 400 meter dash? This is our last one here. So if you run track, you run the 400 meter dash. How many feet are you running in that race? Start with what we have, 400 meters, put that over one. And then we need a conversion. So you may not be familiar with these conversions yet, um, but you will be. Okay. So um, I'm going to go down to inches. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to centimeters and then I can convert centimeters to inches. I happen to know that conversion. So there are 100 centimeters in one meter. Again, make sure meters are in the bottom, make sure that cancels out. And then I can go to inches. So there are 2.54 centimeters in, in one inch. That's an exact conversion. That's something you should maybe jot down, keep handy uh, for reference. And now I need to get up to feet, so I know there are 12 inches in one foot. So if I stop here and I look at units, the meters cancel out, the centimeters cancel out, the inches cancel out, so I'm left with feet, so I'm ready to go. So multiply the top by the top, bottom by the bottom, divide. Be careful when you punch this in your calculator, okay? Just like scientific notation, division, uh, you, your calculator is going to follow order of operations. So if you just simply type in 400 times 100, divided by 2.54 times 12, you're going to get the wrong answer because your calculator will divide by 2.54 and then you said, well, multiply by 12, but you don't want that. So instead, I get to this point and I go divided by 2.54 divided by 12, and then you'll get the right answer there. 1,312.3 feet. Another option real quickly, um, there are 1,609 meters in one mile. This is slightly rounded. Um, but I'm okay if you use that in our class. It's, it's fine. So it's a little bit of a shortcut. So here we just have two steps instead of three in the previous one. So 1609 meters in a mile. And then I know one mile is 5,280 feet. Another one that, that would be handy to uh, keep handy. So now the 1609, like I said, is rounded. So this, I think you actually get 1312.6 or something like that. For our class, we're good either way. So whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions.